Well, hello there and welcome to my little arty corner of the internet. Well, of YouTube at least. Um, and perhaps some other little bits on social media here and there. Um, you can have a look at the, the video description to see where you can find me on social media if you do so wish. It's afternoon here. It's um, about quarter past one in the UK and it's a misty, grey, damp day here in the valleys. It feels most probably colder than it is because of the dampness and psychologically as well because of the greyness. But that doesn't stop me from creating. I'm trying something different today in terms of my scheduled work because in the past I've always started the day with some warm-up art. I say always, I haven't always, but in, since I've been doing YouTube and perhaps a little bit before Start the day with some warm up art. A warm up art. I've recorded it, um, filmed it, released it, and done everything all in one go. And by the time I get this done, I'm sometimes absolutely exhausted because I get that way towards the middle of the day, especially if I don't sleep well at night. So I thought, what did I used to do before I did YouTube and a lot of emphasis on social media? I used to do my work first social media second. So that is what I'm going to try to do. So if you're used to getting my videos earlier in the day, it's a good chance that if this works out for me, you'll be getting them later on in the day. And some days even a bit later if I've got something on in the afternoon or whatever. I'm not organised enough to spend a whole day recording and editing and stuff. That would do my head in completely. I prefer to do it on a day to day basis as the mood takes me. OK, so I hope that makes sense. First, it was it worked out really well because I got a fair number. Um, I got my. I set myself a quota of templates to do when I'm working on a book per day within the deadline I've got. And I've got that quota done and I just needed a break before I do some more. So this is my break, <laughs> sort of, I, you know done my daily ablutions and you know got myself sorted and organized I had a very late breakfast but um, all in all it's worked out well I've got some space here for other variations of this particular plant so I am going to start with this kind of one here except first glass is required oh yes my glasses most definitely are required and I am drawing with pencil because otherwise I'll end up with rather strange looking things like this yeah it's it's what it is but I'm going to start with this kind of one here and I am going to ink in that area yesterday I didn't here if you remember I just let the lines um, define that space or the shape and everything but today I do want to ink this in there is a reason and around the outside I'm just going to it's not a very smooth circle but flowers never are and I am going to use this um, this device dev design device to split up my flower into smaller spaces which may seem a bit like crazy well you're going but you're doing the same thing Angela well essentially yes because it's all variations on a theme and I've chosen a flower here that or a flower shape but you can't do much to change it in many ways I could but I think it would change the essence of what this this is. So I am going to just put a stem in here and maybe I'll take it down here. And I'm going to have a curly, whirly stem. I find it hard to describe what to do. I have to work out which one will become the outside one. This one will become the outside. This one needs to be the 
inner one like that I think no I've done it wrong oh. I don't know how to correct this now or make it work should have gone the other way around you see perhaps I can still do that though that'll work it's the out it's S shapes from here and this way it's a backward S shape. I don't know if that makes any sense. It's easier to see than it is for me to explain. So I've got an S shape here coming from the outside. The outer line here becomes the inner space here. So I did an S shape here so I need to do a backwards S shape. Oh gosh, <laughs> okay. how to confuse myself, yeah. So it goes like this then. And I can take it around there and around. I can do it if I don't try to explain what I've done. I think this bit here in the middle is just, well, perhaps I'll turn the whole stem into a series of black and white. areas like this different sizes so that one doesn't look too out of place I won't do it all because that's that's not what I came here for but it it does what it does what it needs to I do like a curly whirly kind of stem now I have choices here yeah I'm going to use um a micro no one but in the in brown it is and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill each of these sections perhaps or maybe not each of them but perhaps some of them with a particular Zen tangly pattern here I'm doing between and as try as I might to keep the spaces here equal, I'm having to spin things around an awful lot here, and I don't like spinning my book around, it makes such a noise. It took me ages and ages to crack this pattern, I'll have you know. So that works, that's one section. I think on the next one I'm going to turn it so I can find I'll find it easier to work here what I'm going to try to do is to work this down the center of the petal as far as possible without drawing a line in I'm going to find it nigh and impossible to get this very sensual, but I suppose it's a variation of crescent moon. I'm doing these because I, I don't know how this will look, or patterns will look inside these segments of the petal. I think they'd work, but I'm going to try lots of different, well I say lots of different ones, you never know with me. This one I think here is ripe for lots of little circles to fill it in. And I am going to allow them to get gradually bigger towards where I want the highlighted parts of the petal to be, which would be anywhere around here, I think. And then I'll start to decrease the sizes once again. So that we end up with the bottom bits 
and shadow. More brown, less open space. And you can get a dark, it's a darker area. It's subtle because I haven't thought about what I was going to do. Okay, this one. I'm going to do the curvy version of Shattuck. And I am going to darken the bottom corner by filling it in just a little bit because I just feel it gives more of a sense of shape or direction now than which way we're going here or we start here. These, all, these ones are always awkward on the edge. There's that one. Okie dokes. Um, This one, it's only a tiny space, so I think I'm going to pop some Knightsbridge in here, but I'm trying to use an op art kind of thing where I make the squares bigger in the middle and much smaller and closer together on the Um, where I want the shadows and I am zigzagging my way with the squares up because that is the only way I know how to keep myself organised here. So zigzag from side to side. I don't know if that works, it's perhaps too small an area or length of an area but it, there's some, some kind of stuff going on there. Where's my pen? Two left to do. So this one, I'm going to do crescent moon again. I've picked up a hair on the tip of my pen, a bit of fluff or something. I say that. I'm going to do is I'm going to colour these bits in for contrast and I will just put a little dark bit there they look a bit more petally I suppose again if I thought about it I could have curved these into a shape far more so why I like to draw pencil grid lines down because it helps me to manipulate space yeah that's that's the word. That's yeah. That's a good way of describing it. It's by putting the grid down in a way that it looks like it would if you if you've got a curved space underneath. What a grid would look like over it. It helps me to give that illusion of curved space to manipulate the space on the paper to give it that kind of um, feeling. And I think this one. I'm just going to do something quite simple I think, am I? Perhaps not all that simple. Okay, let's have a look. I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to zigzag my way up here. In my in a sketchbook And when working just with one pattern or one motif, I've got the freedom to explore different things. Oh gosh, that went the wrong way. That's okay. I will sort that one now. Because that one there will become dark, as will that one. That will become dark. That one. That one. That one there will. That one there. I think this is that is the pattern John Quill. Which again is one that when shaded and highlighted really does give an impression of folds. In fact, this would look lovely all the way around. The whole of the flower in some ways. 
I'm making it. Oh, where am I going? I'm confusing myself now. It doesn't take much. All will be fine. It always is. Right, that will have to do. Ooh. There's definitely some wobbly bits. That could look quite nice all the way around. That just gives an idea of what could be done. And in this central bit, I am going to put Something that possibly could look like Bronx here, but most probably looks just like a mess because it's not when I do at all very well. But doing this, I can work out, or I can have a look and see what patterns work and which ones don't, which ones I like and which ones I don't. Um, they all, they've all got their own charm. I, this one reminds me, there's a, oh, what's the name of the, the flower? Fritillaries. And they have like a checkered pattern on them. I think in, not in different colours and not as quite as obvious as this, but in um, variations of colour. So from a paler to a slightly darker colour. Fritillaries, really interesting checkerboard um, patterned flowers. So that's, that's something a little bit on the different side. And because I've done that one, I think I really might need to do the other one and again I'm going to take that's a bit better size um, and I'm going to give it a bottom like that I am going to do it that kind of way because the pencil again because I want to do something like um, I've just done here so the sepals at the bottom and then I really do want this curve to come out here right from inside this sepal and the same here so and if I have to extend the line or thicken the line a little bit I'm quite happy to do that it all adds to the sense of volume as well so that one I'm going to darken that one darken that one darken that one as well top I am going to give it a curvy top but I'm not I'm not going to give it this bit particularly though I can give a little bit I think just there it doesn't make sense like that until you add pattern and color so the next job is to separate this up I am going to start with a central space and I'll just divide the other two areas as well, hopefully. They're not all going to be the same size, which is fine, because in nature they wouldn't be. There we go. And then I am going to Give these those areas as well because that helps to make sense of the shape. Okay, so shall I, shall I? Did I, didn't I? I only kept one of my fine liners out, which is a bit too pale for what I want, really. Let me just go back into my pencil case a mo. That one will do nicely. 
it's a, this is a Staedtler Triplus fine liner and it's quite a dusky purple on the, the lid and hopefully it will be here. So what can I do with these? So I'm going to end up doing the same patterns because my head isn't stuffed full of lots of patterns at the moment. But let's have a look at what we can do here. I think this one is so small. I'm just going to put bands of colour in here. It actually is quite a dusky purple as it comes out. Don't always trust the colours of lids of things. Now I also have to bear in mind that these are water soluble. So if I'm going to use water-based media, I must remember not to do it on this one. This one's not a problem with the microns. And I will keep just a little bit at the top without the colour in, just to give it a bit of an edge, I think. So there's one. I do here. Don't have too much space here. But I can give myself some squares. Oh gosh, pencils and pens everywhere. I have got coloured pencils out here for a reason, honest. Again, I'm going to leave a little bit at the top, but I think what I'll do here is I'm going to do this pattern, which I think, is it well? It's one of my favourite ones. I particularly like it when I alternate. Um, so I mirror here mirror ordinary mirror you know i love the patterns that you get that way but i'm going to keep it going all the same way here for well not for ease because it doesn't make any difference which way i do go as i'm getting down i'm not even putting dot in i'm just literally just putting some lines in so i've got this one here um, if I start to put lines in here, I'm just going to get a blob. So let me have a look. I think this is the smallest one I'd be able to do this to. And then I think I've got enough space on this one and this one and perhaps this one there to fill them in mostly this, that is one of it is one of my favorite patterns and i'm just going to i'm going to fill the middle in with this but i think i may go back and use black here to really give a just that hint of darkness that helps to bring that helps quite nicely to bring some structure there doesn't it okay um I think I am going to just put these in borders and I think I'm going to yeah, why not zigzag down went through my head was oh I wonder if I could do ing here and I'm thinking Angela don't even go there <laughs> it's, like, it's not my favorite pattern to begin with I think what I'm going to do 
just put these leaf shapes in. Just colour that one in. And then I'm going to do the same where I can. Down the edge, some of the spaces are just so small, it's ridiculous. And um, I'm going to put one of them in the middle. Where I've got space allows me to, which it does there, it doesn't there on the others, so I'll just fill that space in really. And this one would be half a one. So, well, I could have got a bit more of a, a bit of a bigger one in there, but it's okay. So that one works. And I think I'm going to do something similar to what I did previous one, but I'm just going to put dark spots. In the center so you can see that and what I can do as well because I, I might just color it all in black because to put a white spot in the middle I could go back with a um, jelly roll or a souffle pen which would just give that highlight in fact let's do that now while I think about it I've got my souffle here I don't know if you can see, but where I'm just getting this to work, getting the ink inside to flow, there's all kinds of colours there. I tend to use an edge of my page outside the border of where I'm working to try things like this out. I'm going to pop this in here as well. All right. And I am tempted to put some down here. Part of me is going, Angela, you should have put a black dot in the middle of those clear spaces. Got, you know, the ones I haven't coloured in. <laughs> Funny, I start and then suddenly these thoughts come. But we'll see. So that'll dry while I finish this last one off. So what can I put here? I think some um, mucha. I haven't used mucha on here, have I? Oh yeah, there's a couple there. But not to fill anything. I could have used any sort of fill pattern, I suppose. Um, flux would work nicely, or... Um, anything really you know, sort of thing that would work as a fill pattern and I am alternating these around here and I'm going to go back and elongate that place where they overlap I quite like that there. So that works quite nicely. And then I need to do something about all of these here. So what I'm going to do is because these would be the inside of the petals, I can do what I like. And I think that here I'm going to draw some contour lines in this kind of colour. Bits at the bottom is fine. I'm fine, fine. It's a very strange bottom of a flower, but it works. And I am going to turn it into a bit of a stem. Like that. 
that'll work nicely. And this then, it's very ball shaped and I think to split this area up just going to give it something like that. But those will take one thing left to do. Go back over here, get, get that working again. I've got white dots in the other ones, so I'm going to put some on this one as well. It's always looked raggedy and tatty when it's drying, but once it once the dots are dry, they actually don't look too bad. So there's all of that. Now then, I'm just about done. I'm, there's some small places, and if I don't go back to working on um, templates this afternoon, I, I may finish this plate, this this page completely. But what I've done here, I don't know if you can see, it's very very subtle. But I've used a I've used this. It's a color soft color pencil, and it's in quite a pale color. This one is cloud blue which actually is quite similar to the background. But I just want to try something out here. So I'm filling some of this area in. Only some of it for now. So I just want to try something out. So I'm going to just take it down beyond the leaf and just up here to almost the top of the flower. And I'm going to use, let me have a look, oh, it's a blue I'm looking for, it's not shadow, I'm looking for steel blue, come on where is it, there it is. And rather than add the colour directly to the paper, I'm going to pick it up on my brush. Use the brush to add the highlight to move the colour out. And what I'm hoping, kind of, is that I'll get a darker area. God, blimey, I don't know if you can hear that. Somebody's doing some do it yourself with a vengeance for the sounds on it. And I'm hoping that that colour will help to bring. Because in theory, the colour soft pencils should resist the water, in theory. In practice, I don't know, is the answer. But I just want to see if they do. Because I think it'd be a nice way to add some pattern, some ghostly pattern to the background. Yeah, it'll take some time, but I don't mind that. It's very relaxing to do. Now, it is, I can see it. I don't know if you can though. I'll try adjusting some settings. No. Try the other way. Hmm. Not a lot of difference. Um, more light, less light. It doesn't seem to make much of a difference. It's very subtle. So what I thought I'd do is I've dug out some other colours. That's what I was trying over here. And there's one I think I'd like to try in particular, which is this one, which is a grey green. I'm looking for somewhere that has got an enclosed space so that I can draw pattern in here perhaps even colour it in. This is a bit darker than I wanted, but if I'm going to fill this with shadow, with a shadow colour, then this most probably won't be quite so noticeable. I love the Derwent Colour Softs. They don't require a lot of pressure to put a lot of colour down. And I do have problems with arthritis and so on, which is why I tend to favour water-based media so much, or 
things like alcohol markers which don't require any pressure. Yeah, I'm not using alcohol markers in here because they will go straight through the paper. And I want to be able to use both sides. Now this doesn't need any waiting time. So I think I'll go with steel blue again. Oh, if I do that, I can add some up here, can't I? Get my pattern all the wrong way round. Let's have a look and see what that works like. Is he trying things out on the fly with you? As I'm trying new ideas out, you get to see the end result of them. As well as perhaps giving you an idea of what you could do. I mean, I'm using these graphite tints, but this would work if it works with watercolour or any water soluble medium. Just the water, the um, coloured pencils just provide um, a resist to the to the water and the, the colour. Because these will have elements of coloured graphite in it, or um, then there might be some clouding over of the colour, but it's enough that it will just disappear into the background. So this guy got. I have got just a bit of this here, so I, I'm going to dab, try and dab off some, and that actually works quite nicely. What do you think? Different? Oh yeah. Do I like it? I actually think I do. And what is fab with doing a whole range of plants like this, once I've got leaves in, I'll have lots of sections here that I can use to add, to try this out more, or to add colours. A whole page full of this. And you've got pretty flowers and sections to add tangle patterns to or not. So let me have a look here because if I add some leaves here, unusual shapes, but I don't mind unusual shaped anything, to be honest with you. And perhaps another one here, like that. See if I can echo what I did there, or repeat it rather than echo. It's not exactly the same, but I'm developing the idea of what that leaf would look like as I draw it more, or as I think it could look and work fairly well. And it's not my favourite leaf here, but I've now got these little sections that I can use and perhaps do different colours and let's have a look and see what other colour I got. I did pick up a purple here because I thought this would work really quite nicely. I have got some, where did I put it over there? I can see some pencil marks here which I don't really want. And I know I've got pencil marks over here, which I can now remove because everything will be dry. It's great. Okay, let's have a look here. So, oh, I'm just going to carry on with my, the favourite one of mine. Simply because I love spirals and I think spirals fill spaces so beautifully. So that one is, you could definitely see the patterns there. Perhaps if I it, zoom in a bit. Oh, yeah, you can definitely see them now. I've zoomed in, duh. Okay, <laughs> I'm not the brightest at times. I seriously am not. Okie dokes, let me have a look. I want juniper, if I can find juniper here. That's not it. That's mountain grey, which actually is quite a nice grey. Ah, I've got juniper here. This juniper is a lovely, um, it's a ready purple. And I just think it would work nicely 
colour for that particular purple. It's actually quite a bright purple. But it's that tone on tone. I have got a white colour soft pencil uh, somewhere. In here I have, it's tiny though. Um, in my, my colour soft set. Again, I'm just going to dab the middle bit off. That works nicely as well. And of course, see, I say things like of course as if it's obvious to you. Okie dokes, I just want a where's the aubergine? It's here. I could use some of the just checking, yeah, it's not midnight black. Perhaps just some of the aubergine just to darken just the edges a little bit. So the aubergine is a darker, more saturated colour. It's more of a bluey purple as well. So cooler colours give um, good shadows. So, um, so with purple, you've got a bluey purple, which is a cool purple, and a reddish purple, which is a warm purple. Generally, and cooler colours give a better illusion of depth and distance. You know, if you ever look at the landscape, the further away you see mountains, the bluer they appear, the cooler they look. Even if they're sort of like a yellowy green close up, they're covered with, or hills, or whatever. Um, so this would work. It would work better, perhaps, if I used something like indigo. Of course, yes, we can layer this up. By the way, by adding water to the tips of the pencils, it doesn't it doesn't damage the pencil in any kind of way, shape, or form. All all I all I suggest you do is allow it to dry before you put it back. If you storing it like I do, point down, is try to give it a chance to dry before you put it point down. Otherwise, the the wet stuff comes off in the bottom of your pot. That's so, all, but it doesn't damage it. Once it's dry, it will add colour in exactly the same way as it did um, when it was dry. So there we are. So that was something I wanted to try and actually they work out quite nicely. What do you think? I'm sure you'll leave me comments. Um, if I was doing this as a finished drawing painting, I'd choose colours rather in a different kind of way is that I would do things where you have um, perhaps the same colour all the way across the background or in a large large space like this I might do the background first before I draw on it and gradually change you know use a lighter colour at the top, top and a darker shade gradually change them so you get bands of colour or bands going across possibly I don't know but this one I think is my favourite this one's a bit too different in colour to the background this one's okay because it's green this one is really quite, um, it's monochromatic almost with the background, so it works really nicely. And again, that's something that I like to keep in, in mind. Okie dokes, so let's have a look at adding shadow. I can't do anything to this one other than use graphite pencils, which I, I will do. This one, I'm going to add just a little bit of colour. where we've got, where these would overlap, where there might be some shadow. And I'm going to try my best to use my brush to wet the colour, but to bring it down here because this area underneath the brown line that I'm, I'm up against would actually be in shadow more than the other edge. If I can't manage it, it's fine because I can always go back and lighten the edge up either by wetting it and removing some of the colour or by using something like a white gel pen or similar to add a lighter colour there. It's quite tricky because these areas are really quite small and I'm not the best. I've never professed to be any good with watercolour or water media or with brushes but one does what one can really. Hopefully, we'll get the idea. I 
And this little bit onto the bottom is really going to be quite dark. So let's have a look. So you may be able to do what I've done before. Just pick up bits of colour and really just go add them where I really want it to be the darkest. Especially if the paper's still damp, the colour might just bleed out a little bit. Little bit. Little bit. So don't need much. Don't like harsh lines. I know that with shadows you do get harsh lines, but I tend to feel happier when there's a softer edge to them. Right, that's about the best I can do for that one. Okay. What about these stripes in between? Well, I think that is where a darker colour um, go, with, go with cool brown. It's a bit of a contrast. I was tempted to use um, indigo actually, blue here. But let's go with this one and see. It looks an aki colour as you put it down, but it's going to be Again, I try to keep the central bit as empty of colour as I can, or with the bare minimum amount of colour here, because uh, I want to keep a sense of highlight. I'm not a fan of white charcoal, um, I have to say, but I, I do want to get um, okay this one. So for this one I think the obvious place to put some shadows is underneath these onto the side. I think, well it's obvious to me, because the sides then would sink down and the fronts of these would kind of tip up I think. And again it's going to be tricky to keep the shadow where I want it but I think I, it's doable. And yes, I did say deliberately do a bubble. Something I've said a lot for a long time or used it is do a bubble. Why? Who knows? I may have picked it up from somebody somewhere because I am terrible at picking up words and phrases from people. Um, I really am. Or it could just be something that crept out. It might have been something one of my student stared when I was teaching. Science teacher I was. Which, that works quite nicely even without highlight doesn't it? Okay this one is all about getting shadow away from the lighter bits in the middle because those are the bits I want. Got a lid off of, oh no I thought I had my lid off my pen. I am going to have, just bring a little bit of colour down there, but I'm going to keep those big, big circles there practically free of colour, well, apart from the background colour. And let's have a look. Get the dark colour. You can see then, it's adding that shadow, or the colour, helps to bring out that highlight that's there. It's in the wrong place. If I again, you know, I'm one to use pencils to sketch out where I want things. I'm not exactly doing that. This is another pattern where it's pretty easy where the shadows go. I'm sure there are other ways to add colour to this one, but it's not today. Today I just want to bring out to where there will be shadow. The area is so tiny, it's a bit on the daft side. This one, I think I'm just going to put it at the bottom a little bit. Pop it there as well. Again, with this one, the important thing is to keep this central area as free of colour as I can. So it's constantly cleaning my brush and keeping that area nice and clean. 
these ones oh, I am going to add just for the bottom here I'm not going to do it anywhere else I want them to look like they're tucked behind that stripe what would have been nice would be to add pattern in the narrow ones and just add colour in the wider ones as well and keep the pattern the same going all the way around but as I'm playing with shadow and highlights I'm going to make that a dip I'm going to make this a dip and I'm going to make that a dip and hopefully that will help to bring out this feeling that we've got um, quite sharp and pointed pleats in this particular petal should work keep the top part all empty of colour has that brought that illusion out? I think it may have just a bit this one here I can do nothing with um, except for graphite so let's go and get a graphite pencil I'll use the matte ones because I don't like shiny graphite um, we have a look I'll use a 4B because 4Bs are a bit darker and it may be that I'm, I may be able to add this without having to use a sort of yarn. I might have to use one just to blend it just that little bit. Remembering I need to take that up here. Really I should have done this before I added the um, the dots of the souffle pen. But no matter. And again with this one I'm going to do the same thing around the edges. quite nice and I think the ends of these just a little bit just to give these some darker regions I think the smaller they get the harder it is to do this oh these ones it would be underneath each of these and I'm definitely not going to get a tortillon in here so I am just going to try and do this by using a very light pressure and layering the colour up without blending it out and trusting that such a tiny area that unless you look at it with a magnifying glass you're not going to see all the differences there and further down I'm just going to add little bits as I can get my sharp pencil in luckily this was sharp and I will add some down the edge. Now theoretically, or even in practice, if I if all I wanted to do was to add the shadow along the edge here, I could have done that with graphite into water or an alcohol marker or another marker pen or, or graphite before drawing on top of it. With this one it, again it's just graphite down the edges I could use an alcohol marker on the top of that but um, I'm not going to because it will go through the page and I want to use every page in here <laughs> And said that, no doubt there will come a time when I want to use alcohol markers in drawing because I have many. We've got three sets now. Yeah, a bit of a collector of things. Now this particular one, I can use a thingy on it. Just to soften the edges and I might do that along the ones where there are long edges and the spaces where I can just get in just 
just enough there. Same here, just enough space for me just to get there. That little bit. There we go. Gosh, this is a long video. This is the problem with me now feeling like I've got time to do this is I'm going to end up doing longer videos. But I know you can split it up and watch it as you want, so that's fine. Okie dokes, so how am I doing? How are we done here? I don't know. I know I've lost a, lost a pencil. It'll turn up. I must have popped it in. I've popped it somewhere. It'll turn up. They always do. So... That is more or less it. I will show you this when it's completed, most probably at the start of um, tomorrow's video, because I, I've got a feeling I'd like to spend time with my art this afternoon. Um, when I've done a batch of sketches, I like to send them over for review. And I tend not to want to do any more until I've had feedback on those so I can hone in on things so that, you know, the, the earlier templates may go slower. But as time goes on, things tend to speed up then. But, um, you know, it'll all work its way through and it'll all be fine in the end. I wonder there, is it? I'm worried now about where I've put this pencil. It will turn up. They always do. Um, so I'm going to say thank you very much once again for sharing my arty time with me um it's lovely to see so many people leaving comments about how much they enjoy watching this how many of you are drawing along with me or gaining ideas or even finding my stems funny i find them hilarious as well but i think i like to make art that makes people smile there's enough sadness and hurt in the world as it is and um, an ugliness and i just think if i can bring smiles and a bit of beauty a bit of prettiness into the world then I'm doing a good thing I think that's me as an artist I've got no social statements to make other than I'd like to see more prettiness and kindness and love and smiles in the world and that's not a bad thing I think so thank you anyway thank you for the encouragements again from a couple of people and to all my new subscribers thank you and to my returning subscribers, thank you. It's lovely to see you again. And I'll be here forever saying thank you. So can I just say a big thank you to everybody. And um, hope to see you again, most probably tomorrow. Take care now. Bye-bye.